This is the Mustang. It can fly fast. Uh, I mean, uh, that was the Mustang. Pretty fast, huh? However, there are some nasty rumors floating around about this ship. And we might just as well admit they're true. Some pilots don't like the P-51. Here are the pilots. However, our pilots don't seem to agree with these gentlemen. Here's what they have to say. I peeled off away from that one on nine like I was standing still. And when it comes to blasting enemy pillboxes... Yes, sir. She's the baby for low-level attack. Why, well, I was on top of that supply column before the Nazis knew I was coming. Gentlemen, that was the Mustang. Designed, built, and flown in 180 days. Ordered in 1940 because the British foresaw the day when the deliveries made by the JU-88s to Coventry would be returned with interest. An escort fighter which could fly farther and faster in protecting our bombers, delivering those bundles from Britain. Gentlemen, that was the Mustang. But today, in order to accompany our new bombers deep into enemy territory, our fighters must fly farther still and higher. Out of this need arose... Well, Colonel, there she is, the P-51B. Looks like the old Mustang, doesn't she? Yes, much of the construction is exactly the same. But Mr. Deech, using the same basic design as the P-51A, has built a ship that'll fight from 25,000 feet on up. That's the new engine, eh? That's the Rolls-Royce Merlin 61, built by Packer. It's a 12-cylinder job, like the Allison and the P-51A. But it packs a military rating of 1,520 horsepower and a war emergency rating of 1,630 horsepower and a two-stage supercharger. This two-stage blower and external fuel tanks mean it can serve as a high-altitude escort fighter for long-range bombers, besides doubling as a low-altitude fighter, dive, or low-level bomber. And with 150-gallon fairing tanks under each wing, your pilots will be hopping the Atlantic pretty soon without too much trouble. And we're putting an 85-gallon tank in the fuselage, back of the pilot seat. Now, these tanks, or the bombs, these are dummies, of course, go on these racks on each side, as you know. Without these racks, the plane has 15 miles per hour more top speed. But this ship is faster than the old model, even with the racks on and we're swinging a four-bladed prop to absorb the extra power. It's a Hamilton Hydromatic constant speed job with cuffs. Now, we're using the same laminar flow airfoil as before that made the Mustang such a fast ship. And uh, this is a newly designed aileron that gives the ship an extremely fast rate of roll. We call it the sealed balance type. I have a diagram here that illustrates how this aileron works. Now, the normal aileron looks like this. When the aileron moves up into the airflow, air leaks through the space between the aileron and the wing. That's where a lot of the force applied to the stick is wasted. But our sealed balance aileron lessens to a great extent the force required because the part of the airflow that formerly escaped can no longer do so. The cloth connection stops it. Therefore, this airflow, which formerly escaped, exerts a force down on the airtight cloth, which in turn enables the pilot to force the wing down with much less effort. You don't have to tell me why that's important in lining up those 450s there on a Messerschmitt or a Fokker Wolf. We have a pretty insulation on those guns. Let's take a look at them. Sam. Give me a hand with these access doors here. I uh, want you to notice I we laid the guns on the side to eliminate any bulge in the air force. We're using a simplified mounting that allows removal in a few seconds. What about the guns the Jerry's and the Japs are packing? What kind of protection does the pilot have from enemy gunfire? Well, let's take a look at the sketches, shall we? We'll show you. Here we are. The P-51B is equipped with face-hardened steel armor plating 
and an armor glass windshield. This affords protection for the pilot from bullets hitting within this area. We've also protected the coolant tank in the nose from frontal attack. In other words, in flight you get these cones of protection from enemy bullets. Which should be comforting news to the pilot. Well, personally I think it's a good idea to get rid of the enemy before he has a chance to try the armor plating. You've got something there, Major. Arthur, let's stop shooting the breeze and get this ship off the ground. <laughs> okay, Bob. Colonel, if you'll join me in the control tower, we'll have grandstand seats. Right. See you later, children. Right, sir. Bob will give a continuous radio report on everything he does in this plane, which might deviate from normal pilot procedure, even if it's scratching his ear in the middle of a loop. Hello, Mr. Deeds. Oh, Charlie. These are the gentlemen I called you about. Colonel, let's get over to where we can see things. Ah, there's Bob. Now, you notice he gets in the plane from the rear, and uh, flaps are kept down to prevent anyone stepping on them. Now, Bob, before he gets into the cockpit, checks the Zeus buttons on the radio compartment panels. Once inside the cockpit, he gets comfortable, adjusts the rudder pedals, gets his shoulder harness set. Well, they should be ready by now. Charlie, let's give him a call. OK, Mr. Deeds. Hello, Army 115. This is Mines Tower. The air's all yours, Bob. Nothing expected for the next hour. Over. Hello, Mines Tower. This is Army 115. Well, here's where I start the monologue. Hope your ears can take it. I've checked the servicing of the ship to have an idea of the amount of load I'm carrying. The rate of climb can vary as much as 500 feet a minute, depending on the load. I close the cockpit enclosure by first pulling the left side into position, then lowering the upper portion. And I make sure the enclosure handle is locked in place with a safety latch, and rear hatch and felt molding is checked. He checks to see that the warning pins in the right sliding track are down. Pins checked. Starting the regular before starting engine check. Oh, by the way, if you are going to make an engine run up on the ground, especially pulling more than 40 inches of manifold pressure, be sure that the tail of the P-51B is anchored securely, that the flaps are kept up. You see, the weight of the new Rolls-Royce engine has moved the center of gravity forward as a result, the slipstream from the prop was liable to...